Chapter 21 Publishing Houses and Mission Fields There is much to be done in the way of establishing centers for our work in new fields. Missionary printing offices should be established in many places. In connection with our mission schools, there should be facilities for printing and for training workers in this line. Where there are in training persons of various nationalities, speaking different languages, each should learn to print in his own tongue, also to translate into that tongue from the English. And while he is learning English, he should be teaching his language to such English-speaking students as may need to acquire it. Thus, some of the foreign-born students may defray the expense of their education, and workers might be prepared to give valuable help in missionary enterprises. In many cases, the publishing work will have to be started on a small scale. It will have to contend with many difficulties and to be carried forward with few facilities. But none should be discouraged because of this. The world's way is to begin its work with pomp and show and boasting, but all will come to naught. God's way is to make the day of small things the beginning of the triumph of truth and righteousness. For this reason, none need to be elated by a prosperous beginning or cast down by apparent feebleness. God is to his people riches and fullness and power as they look to the things that are not seen. To follow his direction is to choose the path of safety and true success. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. See 1 John 5, verse 4. Human power did not establish the work of God, neither can human power destroy it. To those who carry forward his work in face of difficulty and opposition, God will give the constant guidance and guardianship of his holy angels. His work on earth will never cease, the buildings of his spiritual temple will be carried forward until it shall stand complete, and the headstone shall be brought forth with shoutings, Grace, grace unto it. The Christian is to be a benefit to others. Thus he himself is benefited. He that watereth shall be watered also himself. See Proverbs 11:25. This is a law of the divine administration a law by which God designs that the streams of beneficence shall be kept, like the waters of the great deep, in constant circulation, perpetually returning to their source. In the fulfilling of this law is the power of Christian missions. I have been instructed that wherever by self-sacrifice and urgent efforts facilities for the establishment and advancement of the cause have been provided, and the Lord has prospered the work, those in that place should give of their means to help his servants who have been sent to new fields. Wherever the work has been established on a good foundation, the believers should feel themselves under obligation to help those in need by transferring even at great sacrifice a portion or all of the means which in former years was invested in behalf of the work in their locality. Thus the Lord designs that his work shall increase. This is the law of restitution in right lines.